I sat quietly on La Push Beach, apart from the party that was going on besides me. Mike Newton was following me around like a pulpy, and he was so boring. OMG, Mike, what are you doing talking to her? I turned around and saw four nasty faces leering at us. Stop being mean, Jessica. Tears, awesome. And if you can't see that, you're just being blind and shallow and stupid like always are. Yeah, I mean, look at her clothes. She looks like a stupid goth biatch. Is she like a rat hooker or what? She was really ugly when she shouted, even though she was technologically a hot chick and dressed in skimpy pink clothes. You know what, Jess? You and your friends are so shallow and you are the real slut. You and Bella and Angela and Lauren may wear short skirts and low-cut tops and stuff, but that doesn't me like you beautiful. It's what underneath that counts. Yeah, speaking of which, what's with her breasts? They're huge. I bet they're fake. I got up and pushed past them and ran away. I felt so embarrassed. I was really sensitive about the face I looked. I couldn't help being slim and blonde with really big boobs. It wasn't my fault. I hadn't done anything wrong. Are you okay? Three really pretty goth girls were standing there smile at me. Who are you? We are Tiffany, Abigail and Rochelle. You seem cool. Do you want to be our friends? Yeah, of course. I'm just a bit melancholy because those horrible cheerleaders were being mean jerks and saying my boobs are fake. OMG. Do you mean Jessica and Bella's gang? They hate us too because we don't care what they think. They're just jealous because you're the prettiest girl in school now and they're all playing next to you. But we don't care about stuff like that. We only care about people's personalities. Cool. I talked to Tiffany, Rochelle and Abigail for hours and they were so cool. I never had proper friends before who didn't care what I looked like or where I came from. They just liked me for me and liked them because they were uber cool and we had loads of stuff in common. But after a while, they all went home and I stayed on the beach. It was getting late and I didn't want to go home to Uncle Larry in case he raped me in his car again. Suddenly, I heard a voice. Fowls here. Fowls seem to be causing quite a stir in school. His voice was smooth and sexy and like from another time. Edward. What do you mean? Basically, every gay at school wants to have sex with me. And every girl wants to eat the alive for it. How's that for causing a stir, my lady? Shut up, jerk. By the way, I met your girlfriend before. Bella, I think her name is. I don't like her or anything, but how the hell can you cheat on her like that? Tiffany told me you and Bella are like the school's golden couple or something. What could happen if I told people how you acted in that corridor with me? OMG, sweet lady! I must not tell anyone. It was a moment of madness, that's all. I'm so, so sorry for what happened. I hope Vine can forgive me, but I promised myself to Bella, and that's just how it is, no matter how much Val interests me. Fine, then stay away from me. I was burning from anger and fury, but he knew how much I wanted him, and he drove me mad. He put his hands inside my panties, and I gasped. I was suddenly desperate for sex with him and I tore my clothes off and I was in my underwear. Have sex with me now, Edward. I can't. Please, I'm begging you. No! He shouted and ran away crying. <laughs> I put my clothes back on, slowly feeling so ashamed and embarrassed. I could hardly move. I couldn't believe I had begged him to do sex with me. And even worse, he had said no. I went home and Uncle Larry made me cook his dinner and suck his cock while he ate his food and then he raped me and hit me with a shoe all night and I didn't even complain because I deserved it for being such a horrible slut even though it made me want to die inside. Uncle Larry finally left me alone. I thought about killing myself as I fell slowly into a dreamless sleep. The four cheerleaders had followed me around school and had been mean to me for the last week for making fun of my clothes. I had purple streaked blonde hair and saying I was too slim and had boobs like a bronze star. It really upset me. And also, Uncle Larry had taken my clothes off and raped me loads of times last week. And even though Dave and Maria were back home, every time they went out to different places, they left me with him and he hit me and made me go to sleep, which was so horrible I wanted to die every time it happened. Edward Collins stared at me whenever he saw me at school. I hated him for the way he made me feel, and the fact that he was a cheater and an ass. I probably would have ended my life that week, it had been for my lovely new friends Abigail, Rochelle and Tiffany. 
I sat in the cafeteria with them at lunch. Hey, Tiana, are you doing the talent contest tonight? No way, I'm not good enough. OMFG, are you kidding? You're an amazing singer. You're the best I've ever heard. No joke. Thank you, but you're just being nice. I'm not that good. And even if I was, I wouldn't perform. The whole school is already talking about me, saying what a freak I am. I just want to be an average person. Come on, Tia, you have to do it. Jessica and Bella and the cheerleaders win every time with their dumb dance routine. It is so annoying. They aren't even talented. Someone needs to teach them a lesson, hon. I don't know, maybe. I pimpled mutely, but I had no intention of actually doing it. Later on, me and my friends sat in the crowd and watched the contest. The cheerleaders did their dance routine, and they weren't that awesome. They were just wearing slutty cloth so all the guys could stare at them, and because they're so popular, no one was allowed to say they sucked. The principal caked up on the stage. And now for our final act... Altalina, Rebecca Lord. Everyone looked at me and I was shocked. OMFG, who put my friggin' name down for this? Who knows, girl? Just get up there. And I went up there. I sang Total Eclipse of the Heart. Punk rock version, so it wasn't sappy or lame or anything. And everyone watched me. I was so embarrassed at first, but everyone seemed to be enjoying themselves. Except the cheerleaders who were totally mad. LOL. The song finished and everyone looked happy and clanged at me and I went blushing to sit on my friends. Remind me to kill whichever one of you bitches put my name down for this. LOL. It wasn't us, you know. And the winner is... Altalina. Rebecca Lord. I went back onto the stage and shook his hand and then everyone applauded me. I saw Bella and Jessica storming out the room, angry that I had run. And I smiled. Later on, I walked home happily. You are awesome tonight. You have a stunning voice like silk and satin in the moonlight. It was you, Dad. He had a massive erection. It was so hot and sexoy. And I wanted to touch it so badly, but I didn't. You look beyond beautiful up on that stage. Like an old painting in a church. I wanted to charge right at you and kiss fine lips right there. You will never touch me again, you sicko! Last week I fucking begged you to sex on me and you turned me down. I have never been so humiliated in all my fucking life. What the hell is wrong with you? It's complicated here, my lady. It's just I can't resist me. But I can't be with I either. It's me or her. I can't make that choice, Tia. You're going to have to. First, he tells me who thou really are. Who are thy parents? Who are thee? My mum dies when I was bored, and I never knew my father. That's it. We both know that's not the full story. You're a vampire, like me. OMFG, I'm not a frickin' vampire. I think I'd notice that, you total dipshit. You don't drink human blood? I don't drink any blood, you asshole. Is this your idea of a joke? Because no one's laughing. I ran away, feeling insulted. I didn't want to see that stupid hot jerk again.